welcome to Themis Podcasts. Themis is a risk management firm specialising in financial crime. Our aim of these podcasts is to bring you interesting news, interviews and recordings of our exclusive events from the world of financial crime. Being Accountable Modern Slavery and the Accountancy Profession In this podcast, we talk to representatives from PwC, the University of South Australia and the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales about modern slavery and the accountancy profession. We discuss how modern slavery is relevant to accountants and explore ways in which they can engage with the topic. Hello and welcome to this podcast. My name is Nadia Shaughnessy and I'm a manager in the Themis Think Tank. One of the main projects our think tank has been working on recently focuses on modern slavery and human trafficking in the UK's financial sector. This podcast is being recorded as part of that research and outreach programme. Today, we look specifically at the modern slavery risks facing accounting firms. I'm delighted to be joined by an all-female panel from industry and academia. In no particular order, I'd like to introduce Dr. Catherine Christ, who is a lecturer in accounting at the University of South Australia, Latifa Kapadia, Head of Social and Supply Chain Sustainability for PwC UK, and Sophie Wales, Head of Ethics and Economic Crime at the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, or ICAEW for short. Thanks all for joining. It's a real pleasure to have you all on the podcast. From talking to you previously, I know how much valuable experience you have to share with us today. So I wanted to start off by talking a bit about the genesis of our research programme. When we began this project, we found that awareness and understanding of modern slavery and human trafficking across the UK's financial sector was quite shockingly low. Over 30% of the financial services employees we surveyed did not believe that modern slavery is something that happens in the UK. We heard the phrase, this doesn't affect us, in a number of conversations we held with accountancy firms in particular. Catherine, I'll turn to you first if I may. You've written extensively about the topic of modern slavery as applied to the accountancy profession. Could you explain to us how modern slavery is relevant to accountants and why they need to be aware of it? Um, Absolutely, Nadia, happy to. First of all, I would like to say that your finding of low awareness is not really surprising because awareness of modern slavery tends to be low across the board. Yet what most people don't realise is there are more people enslaved today than there actually were during the entire period of the transatlantic slave trade. So this is a really big problem. However, accountants and accounting firms are actually implicated when it comes to modern slavery risk and modern slavery risk management in a number of ways. The first of those, that I would like to talk about relates to large firms. When we think about the large accounting firms, your PwCs, KPMGs, etc., they're likely going to have to prepare a modern slavery statement and assess their own modern slavery risks in their own operations and supply chains. This is because they meet the threshold, the reporting thresholds, required under the UK Modern Slavery Act and also in my country, the Australian Modern Slavery Act 2018. One area that I've discovered in my research where accounting firms are particularly concerned relates to branded items, where they will often want to consider where those items are coming from. So if they're going to put their accounting firm um, title on a shirt, coffee mug, You know, these are items they buy in and they're going to want to make sure that they are modern slavery free. So that's one way accounting firms are implicated. Secondly, though, when we think about large accounting firms, they are no longer just organisations that prepare and sign off on annual reports or advise on things like taxation. 
These days we find accounting firms are often described as professional service firms and they provide advice on many areas, including on non-financial performance. And with the introduction of the UK Modern Slavery Act and the Australian Modern Slavery Act, this obviously includes providing advice in relation to modern slavery and my own research in the area confirms this. Basically what we're seeing is that businesses out there need help and one of the main sources of help in the areas they go to, they go to the major accounting firms. So that's another way in which accounting is implicated. Finally, there are implications for accountants in business. If we have a look at the more than 40 million people who are currently in modern slavery conditions worldwide, more than 20 million of these are actually trapped in corporate supply chains. And research suggests that this affects every industry and virtually every country around the world. So this is something that does happen in the UK. It happens in Australia as well as in the developing countries we probably think about more commonly. And it's also not just the direct operations of these businesses we're concerned with. We're talking about supply chains. These days with modern slavery legislation, organisations are having to be accountable, not just for their direct operations, but looking at what's happening in their suppliers' operations and the suppliers of their suppliers. And what my research has shown is that most organisations actually don't have a very good understanding of their supply chains and certainly not beyond that first tier of direct suppliers. And so what is really crucial here is understanding the notion of extended accountability. When we look at accountants in business, uh, we can see that accounting decisions that are often made by the finance department and these can actually have flow on effects to upstream suppliers. For example, we've often seen a trend over the last few decades of cutting costs and increasing time pressures. Now, this sounds great from an accounting perspective um, in relation to a business, but at the end of the day, someone actually has to pay for this. And so what seems like a simple business specific accounting decision has negative flow on effects for those with little power, normally at the beginning of the supply chain. And so accountants need to consider the broader implications of their decisions within business. So in summary, I think that even though a lot of accountants at this point don't feel that modern slavery is something they need to consider, there are multiple implications for the profession whether it be accounting firms related to reporting obligations, those offering professional advice and services to other businesses and to those accountants who are actually working corporations themselves. So this is actually a big issue and accountants need to pay attention. Well, thank you very much for sharing, Catherine. As you say, it's clearly a really multifaceted issue for accountants that starts within businesses and sort of continues across what are now often very complex supply chains. And thank you also for providing some point statistics and, and, a, and that historical comparison. But as you said, on a very basic level, many larger accountancy firms, both in Australia and in the UK, need to be aware of their modern slavery risks because they have a legal obligation to do so. This is, of course, because of the Modern Slavery Act which requires UK companies with a turnover of over £36 million to publish an annual statement which sets out the steps they are taking to prevent modern slavery in their business and in their supply chains. So Sophie, as part of your role at the ICAEW, you work to spread the message about modern slavery to a large network of chartered accountants across the UK. In a previous conversation we had, you said you seek to position modern slavery as much more than a simple compliance exercise. Could you tell us why you think accountants should go beyond just a basic regulatory obligation to comply with the Modern Slavery Act? Yeah, sure. So I, I would agree that Modern Slavery Act compliance is important. And it, and it is crucial that proper due diligence is done on supply chains and actions are taken to mitigate the risks of modern slavery existing 
in a business's broader dealings um, and operations. But what it really comes down to is that modern slavery is a crime and it's a crime that causes untold harm and trauma for its victims. So as accountants, we have a public interest duty to meet, but, but also as citizens, there is a moral imperative to do what we can to stop this horrible crime. And, and I think what I found is there can be a misconception that modern slavery only affects big businesses, but actually many cases have shown that there's quite a lot of small scale instances out there. So people working, picking fruit or in, in, in as staff in quite small restaurants. So the risk is there across the board. And I think there's some quite shocking estimates about the scale of this problem in the UK. Um, I've heard a figure of 136,000 people could be affected. Um, and I think there's been around 10,000 reports made to the National Crime Agency in recent times. But that shows this is a massive unreported problem. Um, the other thing that I think is, is um, really striking is that most victims of modern slavery in the UK are actually UK nationals. And so are most of the perpetrators. So this is a bit at odds with the perception that, that does exist. Um, so I think really the more you discover about modern slavery, the more you realise it's a problem that we should all care about. And as accountants, we do have a role to play in looking for the signs in our clients and in our businesses. Absolutely. The statistics, I mean, are really shocking. And you put it in really powerful terms. Modern slavery is quite simply a crime. I remember a powerful statement that Dame Sarah Thornton, the UK's independent anti-slavery commissioner, made during a recent webinar of ours. She said, the true test is not about what you say, but about what you do. And that's why simple compliance um, and publication of the Modern Slavery Act just isn't enough. So Latifa, building on Sophie's points and based on your experience working on human rights at a big four firm, how important do you think the reputational aspect of a modern slavery focus is for accountancy firms? What, what opportunities come with being seen as an anti-slavery industry champion by clients and by consumers? So PwC has had a long-standing program looking at aspects of human rights such as discrimination and equal pay. Um, it was back in 2012 that we actually introduced our first human rights policy, which even then was very much focused only on our people and I say supply chains at the very periphery. Uh, since the launch of the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights and the UK Modern Slavery Act coming into force, however, We've made a real step change in the way we view our association to modern slavery risks. Uh, we certainly are aiming not to just follow the letter of the law, but the spirit of it. And I guess this is where we come to moving beyond compliance. It can be viewed as playing two roles, one of managing our reputational risks, but also upholding and promoting human rights. So um, almost strengthening our brand and reputation, living up to our purpose of building trust in society and solving important problems. As a professional services firm, we don't manufacture any goods per se, and therefore don't face the same level of risk of close association in our supply chain to labour exploitation or modern slavery as we might if we were to be producing goods, for example. In spite of this, as Catherine talked to, We've chosen to follow best practice and focus on where our most salient issues are. Initially, we identified some key hotspots such as IT hardware, catering in our offices, support staff uniforms, and corporate merchandise, which again, Catherine talked a lot about. Um, these are low risk items um, made by low skilled workers, which typically are indicators of um, higher risk for modern slavery. Uh, and as well as that, we uh, look at the recruitment of our own support staff, so cleaners, maid room staff, and so on. All of these well known for labour violations. So we're growing our program in these areas to increase transparency and assurance. In doing so, we've applied a two pronged approach. So we we have tier one, which are normally suppliers who we are procuring the goods who are procuring goods on our behalf. They're onshore in the UK. Here we're focusing more around recruitment of food, which is largely locally sourced. And because of this, we have 
more leverage, get greater ability to influence what, what is going on. In the other hotspots, however, which are tier four upstream in the supply chain, it's so harder to get assurance on, but nevertheless important. Um, so this is where your sourcing materials or goods are being components being put together and manufactured. Um, so we have a much more targeted approach here. And in fact, this year we've expanded our hotspots even further to include global IT suppliers, hotels, and waste and recycling. So all of that is to say that when we talk about modern slavery in the financial sector, I believe it's not only about the work we do with our clients, which I know we'll come on to and is a significant area of consideration, but it's also about looking within our own supply chain and managing these risks. Certainly, and it seems like there's a there's a very broad remit of activities and areas to consider when assessing modern slavery risks within business and within supply chains, um, let alone with clients. Um, so clearly, a modern slavery focus brings significant benefits on a number of different fronts. And yet many accountancy firms often seem not to know how to even begin approaching the topic. Catherine, you drove the development of the modern slavery compass, which is, as I understand it, a sort of pragmatic tool to assist Australian businesses in fulfilling their reporting obligations and managing their modern slavery risks. I'd be really fascinated to learn more about this tool. Um, so could you please tell us a bit more about what mo motivated the project and what you discovered, uh, and especially from an accountancy angle, as you worked on this tool? Um, no, absolutely. Thank you, Nadia. This tool really came about because as I started to research in the area of modern slavery and modern slavery risk management, I started to realise that there was a lot of complexity out there and I was also starting to get contacted by businesses who were basically saying we found you online we don't really know where to start we don't know what we're doing so I started to think that we needed some sort of simple tool to help business the modern slavery compass was a research initiative funded by CPA Australia so it was actually funded by an accounting body and the reason they decided to fund a project like this is because they recognised how important modern slavery risk management and reporting was going to be for their members, both in firms, accounting firms, but also in business. So to put together the modern slavery compass, we initially did a desktop study of 58 different human rights, sustainability and modern slavery initiatives to see if we could identify some of the areas of best practice and where they were all focusing. And then we tried to cut through that complexity and we did interviews with a whole range of stakeholders from NGOs, religious organisations, One Union, uh, representative of the Big Four, uh, UN Global Compact, etc. And so we tried to see if we could come up with something that was relatively simple but that could help businesses that don't really have an understanding of modern slavery and also those that were a little bit further along the road. So the compass considers, I won't go into too much detail, but it starts with preconditions, where have we been? The current position, where are we now? Which is very important for business to consider. The expectations, so where are we going and what do we need to do now? The results, which is obviously finding out, well, what were the outcomes from the actions that we took and also the effectiveness. And that's actually a very challenging one, effectiveness. What do we mean when we talk about effectiveness in terms of modern slavery management and reporting? So within each of those areas, we tried to present a range of questions and actions that businesses could take and also point them in the direction of resources which are already available out there. There are some brilliant resources for business and we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We just wanted to bring this information together. It is my hope this will eventually be developed into an app for business to use, but obviously at the moment COVID-19 has put a little bit of a stop to some of these other developments. In relation to accounting, 
What this project really revealed is that accounting for modern slavery risk um, in supply chains, direct operations, it's actually a multidisciplinary practice. It's not something that will just involve accountants. It's obviously going to involve risk management specialists, procurement, the legal department. There are a lot of people who will be involved. But one thing that did come through quite strongly is that addressing modern slavery risk, and especially as it relates to the requirements of legislation like the UK Modern Slavery Act and the Australian Modern Slavery Act, it's all about accountability. And accountability, of course, this is the area, this is the bread and butter of accountants. You know, this is what we are about. And this goes back to what Sophie was saying as well. We've got a public interest duty, so they will be involved. So, yeah, it was just basically a pragmatic tool. Don't know yet. We don't have any figures on who's using it, but hopefully I have received some positive feedback. And so hopefully, yeah, businesses are getting some use out of this tool and it's been helpful. Thanks, Catherine. It's it's really great to hear more about these, these practical considerations and how best to tailor the message to businesses of different sizes to ensure that guidance is as actionable as possible and also to address it on a company-wide scale so as to ensure silos aren't created. So we at Themis are also seeking to make our research about modern slavery and the financial sector as insightful for industry as possible so that it has a, a practical um, result. Latifa, so based on your experiences running the human the in-house human rights program for PwC UK and continuing in this vein of practical tips. Could you share with us some of the practical ways in which awareness and understanding of modern slavery can be increased amongst accountants? I know that you have, for example, developed some modern slavery training for your operational and client facing workforces. Yes, of course. Um, when it comes to modern slavery, um, let's remind ourselves, as we said earlier, it's an economic crime, noted as the third most profitable criminal industry behind the arms and the drug trade. So it thrives as long as it stays hidden, and the best way to tackle this is through education and awareness. And that's why we developed and launched online training last year um, for, for all teams across the firm, including procurement, risk management, so all those in the back office and front office. And the learning objectives for our people um, that this was designed to address was for them to understand how modern slavery manifests manifest itself in a corporate environment. So which are the high risk sectors and geographies that modern slavery thrives in? What are the business models where modern slavery flourishes? You know, those with complex supply chains and heavily cash-based businesses, for example. Um, secondly, uh, it looks to address what are the physical signs of a potential victim of modern slavery. When our people are at a client site, say undertaking a stock take on a factory floor, or even in our own offices or supply chains, do they have sufficient awareness of what the indicators are of, for a potential victim of modern slavery? Thirdly, what are the financial transactions and unusual business activities that should act as a red flag? When looking at payroll, for example, um, if the hours of the work people are doing doesn't tally with wages, or are all wages round numbers, are the bank account details all the same, um, or are they making unusual business decisions that don't make obvious commercial sense? They should all, they should all act as a, as a flag for our people. Lastly, um, we share what they should do if they suspect human trafficking or modern slavery to be occurring. As financial experts, our role is always to have professional skepticism. And with this topic, it's no different. This is the key message we are trying to share with our people and give them the tools to be able to do this. Great, Latifa. You raised some, some really key points about the external risks and threats facing accountants and the need for education about those. This is precisely the topic that I now wanted to turn to. Um, in March 2020, earlier this year, 
the UK's National Crime Agency published a document of indicators of modern slavery and human trafficking, specifically in the accountancy sector. So this is a tailored document that highlights the importance of really targeting the message about modern slavery, including to an accountant audience. Sophie, your team at the ICAEW worked together with the NCA, as I understand it, to put this document together. We'd be really interested to hear more about the specific red flag indicators of modern slavery and human trafficking that apply to accountancy firms. What sort of business patterns and financial flows should accountants be looking out for in their day to day work? Thanks, Nadia. So I think this is a project is a good example of how the accountancy sector in the UK has worked collaboratively with law enforcement to produce a useful tool for accountants. Um, and I'll talk a bit about some of the headlines from that document. Um, but the first thing that's quite interesting is it, it picks out the services accountants provide where they are more likely to perhaps see some of these signs. So that includes audit and bookkeeping services, insolvency services, um, payroll services and tax compliance. So it is quite across the board of, of the kinds of services we provide. So there's three categories of, of red flags um, that predominantly to look out for, and those are to do with the business's profile, the workforce profile, and the victim profile. So I'll give you some examples from each of those. So business profile, I suppose, as for all kinds of economic crime, cash-based businesses um, are often used to exploit victims and to pass unexplained funds through. So that can include cleaning businesses, car washes, nail bars, restaurants and agriculture uh, and, and I suppose those are the industries where we would think there's a high risk of money laundering in general but that can that can then extend to modern slavery because a lot of criminals are involved in lots of kind of various types of crime they don't just stick to one area and um, the other thing that we've seen is that businesses on the brink of insolvency can be vulnerable to manipulation by traffickers and um, when money's tight I think people sometimes compromise their, their ethics in these areas um, the other thing to look out for is when you're doing your client due diligence, any adverse media on that client or people they're associated with. And that doesn't have to be conclusive things. It can just be allegations that have been made to a connected party. But that should make you um, more concerned with the risk. Um, the other thing is unusual business activity. So sometimes you see a really diverse portfolio of businesses held by one client. And, and a lot of those also being in high risk industries. So, for example, if a client's involved in, say, construction and takeaways and care homes, I mean, that's quite an unusual mix. And you should be asking, well, is there a commercial reason for, for why this is happening? You can also look out for unusual payment systems. So um, although we've talked about a lot of the, the perpetrators being UK nationals, that, that there's also a very large element of overseas nationals being involved in these crimes. So. If there's um, cash transfers to high risk countries, especially where that's being done through um, money service bureaus, for example, that should ring some alarm bells. Um, we may also see that perhaps payments are being processed outside of the normal hours you would expect for that business. And again, that can suggest that something's awry. So in terms of workforce profile, um, businesses involving low paid manual labor, that workforce is quite vulnerable to exploitation. Um, and as Latifa said, there, there are certain things that you might spot in how that workforce is paid. Um, so if you're doing payroll services, this may become apparent. So um, if, if the staff are all doing different hours, kind of regular hours, but they're all paid the same, um, or if they're getting round some salaries, you should query why that makes sense. Um, sometimes there can also be a suspicious lack of staff costs, and that might be something you notice on a bookkeeping or, or audit job, especially if it's a service industry business. It raises the question, well, who, who's being paid to do this work? So it's about looking to see whether things add up. Um, and then in terms of victim profile, depending on the services we're providing, um, we, we may perhaps have the opportunity to, to see some of the people who could be involved in this. For example, on an audit, like Latifa said, if there's an audit team out there. And there's a few things you should look out for. So do the, do the people there appear kind of unkempt or malnourished or do they have visible signs of injury? And if you interact with them, is it that the kind of the narrative they give isn't consistent um, and that they're struggling to remember key pieces of, of information, which you find a bit odd? 
Um, you may also find that these people live and work at the same address. They might live in poor conditions. They may have no choice who they're living with. Um, and they may also not know their work or home address, which you, you would find quite strange. Um, you would also expect that these people to perhaps not have possession of their identity documentation. So all of these are, are red flags that there could be an element of modern slavery going on. Um, the, the National Crime Agency document does give this in a lot more detail, um, and they also have produced some videos on their website, which show you some of the, the cases they've intervened in and some of the personal stories, which really do resonate. Yeah, thank you, Sophie, for that really comprehensive description. You really highlight the importance of knowing what to look out for in order to spot these crimes. And in this sense, education and awareness about key risks and indicators really proves key to tackling modern slavery. Catherine, I wanted to ask whether, based on the in-depth research that you've done, there's a case study of accountants discovering or being affected by modern slavery concerns that you could share with us. This might really help to ground some of the risks we've been talking about in real life. Not a problem, Nadia. Um, I think the thing that everyone needs to recognise is that this is a very new area for business and also for research. What we are seeing is many businesses are just feeling their way uh, through their obligations under legislation and obviously quite often research lags a little bit behind. Uh, what we do know, however, at the moment is that accountants and business people, as we've already discussed, they don't really have a good understanding of these issues at the moment and many of them are saying that they need help. I don't have a concrete real world example to share with you, but I am currently actually co-editing a special issue of the British Accounting Review, which will specifically look at the topic of modern slavery and the accounting profession. So I'm really hopeful that we will get some cutting edge research um, that will answer your question emerging from that special issue. However, what I will say, and Sophie's already done a brilliant job in providing some great examples, but what I will add is that accountants need to remember, and I mentioned this earlier, that costing and timing decisions in business will always come with a social cost. And quite often it is down or up the supply chain, I should say, where people will actually pay. An example that I do have relates to the cocoa industry, and I believe there is also evidence from the cotton industry as soon as price pressures get put on these industries so the price of cocoa and cotton goes down, what we see is the use of modern slavery via forced labour and the worst forms of child labour actually go up. So I think this is something that accountants really need to be aware of because quite often, you know, it is accountants, it's CFOs, it's people in the finance department that are making some of these decisions. And ultimately, if accountants are not part of the solution, they're really a part of the problem. And I also think uh, there is a really good quote that's thrown about a lot in the um, human rights community that I think is really important to mention here. It comes from the well-known abolitionist William Wilberforce, and he once said, you may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know. And I think that is really pertinent when it comes to the discussion of modern slavery and accounting in modern slavery. And especially in these days when you look at social media and what is going on out there and some of the examples we've seen in practice, I firmly believe that when it comes to modern slavery, it is really a case of being accountable as accountants, as businesses, or ultimately I think you will be held accountable. And so you really have a choice. And one thing I would just like to add on the end there is that when I talk about, you know, doing the right thing and being accountable, it's not necessarily being able to say that we have no modern slavery in our supply chain or business. If you look hard enough, chances are you are going to find it. It's about putting the right procedures and processes in place or if you're advising a business, helping them to do that and making sure that if you do find modern slavery that you have policies and procedures 
in place that keep the victim first and foremost. And I think if you do that, you will be demonstrating your accountability. Brilliant. Thanks, Catherine. Some really powerful arguments there. And I really look forward to reading the special issue you mentioned. So this leads really nicely into my final question, which I wanted to pose to you all. To those who say that modern slavery doesn't concern them in the accountancy sector, what message do you have? As was mentioned earlier in the session today, it really is everybody's problem. There are currently 40 million people enslaved worldwide. And we're not talking about what some people refer to as just wage theft or white collar modern slavery, which some people, you know, it's a term people use when they talk to me sometimes. We're talking about people who are in situations where the rights equivalent to ownership are being exerted by one party over another who is the vulnerable victim. Nobody wants to see this happen and yet the evidence is very clear. This is occurring in every country. It is occurring in every industry. And if we look around the room, if I look around my room here, I'm sitting in front of a laptop, I have a phone here, there is probably slavery embedded in many of these products. So in some way, we are all implicated. And as I said before, if we're not part of the solution, we're part of the problem. So it is now time for, I think, us all to stand up and for business and for accountants to take the lead here to recognise that we do have these uh, social obligations and to recognise that forcing people to work against their will, uh, engaging in the worst forms of child labour, it's not something that really is acceptable in any civilised society and we are at a position where we should no longer accept that. It's everyone's responsibility. Absolutely. In today's interconnected world, it seems as though no, no organisation is fully immune. Latifa, Sophie, did you have anything to add before we wrap up? Um, so, I mean, I would entirely agree with what Catherine has said. We, we do all have a role to play in helping prevent this horrible crime that ruins people's lives. Uh, and I think as accountants, it's not only the public interest duty, we also have money laundering reporting obligations and that modern slavery is a crime that has proceeds and it is money laundering. So we have a responsibility to report those suspicions to the National Crime Agency and there's ways that you can flag to them that you think modern slavery is involved or that there's vulnerable people involved and they, they will intervene where they can. Latifa, did you have anything you want to add? Sure, yes, I would um, echo Catherine and Sophie's point. Uh, sadly, modern slavery is pervasive in our society and it's driven by financial gain. And we, we must remember that it's not limited by geographical boundaries, but it very much is present in the UK. And as financial professionals, we are all very likely to come into association with it in one form or another. And I think it's a personal, moral, professional duty on ourselves, I say, as a, as a chartered accountant, um, to do our bit to be educated and aware enough on this topic so that we can play our role. Uh, in hopefully tackling this very complex issue in society. Thank you. A collective responsibility and ethical as well as legal duty, as you've said. Thank you very much to our guests, Sophie Wales, um, Catherine Christ and Latifa Kapadia for joining us on this podcast today. You've all raised some fascinating points and shared a lot of light on what's a, what is a really important topic that seems to be quite significantly under-discussed. Let's try and collectively get your message across to as many people in the accountancy sector and across the broader financial services industry as we can. Thank you for listening and I hope you have found this to be an informative and valuable podcast. A quick shout out if I may. A core theme of our public-private research project is to drive an industry-wide response and so we are really keen to speak to as many financial institutions as possible so that we can understand current and best practices. 
Whether you work for a bank or building society, an investment fund, an insurance house, an accountancy firm, a money service or payments business, a regular or crypto exchange, or any other financial institution, we want to hear from you. If you'd like to either participate or sponsor this research, please do get in touch. We would love to talk to you and your team about what you are currently doing to either detect or prevent any links to modern slavery and human trafficking. You can find out more via our research website, www.crime.financial forward slash MSHT. Thank you for listening to the latest Themis podcast. We hope you found it interesting and informative. If you would like to find out more about Themis, get in touch with us via our website, www.crime.financial. You can also subscribe for future news and interviews.